Uh, all right, what else we got? You wanted to talk about this Carta thing. Yeah, so um, I am a user of Carta. I, I think the product's only okay. It's still quite frustrating to use. But Carta laid off uh, a bunch of people the other day. Like 167 and, people. Yeah, and they raised money. Um, and their CEO, Henry, wrote this message that he made public. Uh, and he said something like, it was not your man- manager's fault for laying you off. It was 100% my fault. In fact, it was the opposite. Your managers tried to help you. And I'm the one who reviewed every list. And I said, we're going to fire this person. So blame me. And I think that was great. I thought it was a great message. So, so high, high level, he was basically saying, hey, we laid a bunch of people off. And I'm going to um, publish the announcement I made to the company so that, you know, presumably other CEOs and other companies can kind of learn from this, use this, or take solace in the fact that I did this too. I don't know, whatever the purpose yeah. is. Content and he, marketing. And, <laughs> and he published this. And I typically am fall into the category of all press is good press. Go ahead and do it. I thought this was kind of lame. Did you, do you agree? And, and, I, and I tweeted at Henry, and I want him to come here, and I'll say this to his face. I, I think he seems like a cool guy. This move, I think, was kind of lame. Right. I, I would agree. I've kind of followed this guy for a little while. Like I've read some of his other stuff or, or seen some interviews. Seems like a good guy. Seems like a, like a smart guy. And I think Carter's a good product. Um, and I like some of the other stuff they've done. Like they have a next chapter program basically to help people who want to, tra- people who want to leave the company. They don't make it this like awkward exit. They like celebrate it and whatever, you know, in theory. So I thought this was lame mostly because um, I thought two things. I thought it was tone deaf. And um, secondly, I didn't think the actual statement was very good. So I thought just the, pr- the premise of what he was trying to do, like what is the upside and what is the downside? Um, it, it, to me, it looked like he was trying to pat himself on the back. And I know he would, yeah. never, he would say, that's not what I was trying to do, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I think he was trying to pat himself on the back and um, also like, you know, give a little bit of sort of, you know, put Carter's name out there again, like just by, it's kind of like the buffer way of like publish everything and uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, and you get attention. Uh, But I just thought it was tone deaf. And also it seemed like what he wanted people's reaction to be was like, wow, great leadership, way to take responsibility, great CEO-ship. And And he uh, got that. And both, not from me. When I read this, I was like, this was a pretty horrible way to do the announcement. Uh, And I'll tell you why. He started, okay, so here's like, I'm just going to bullet point the, the, the summary. So he goes, um, over the last few weeks, we've been talking about recession planning. I said layoffs were likely, and today is the day. I can't delay it any longer. Okay, weird start, but all right. Then he says, I'm sorry if I apologize. Uh, if, if I sound robotic, I'm reading off a script because I don't know if I can get through this without something to lean on. Okay, you're not the victim. Don't say that. That's also kind of, yeah, that's, that's pretty lame. Yeah, lame as fuck. Uh, then he says, okay, let me start with the details. We're going to lay off 161 employees. That's 16% of our company. It's going to be different across the company. All right, whatever. Then this was weird, I thought. It was just like, if you are one of those affected, you'll receive an invitation from your manager. Uh, if you do not receive a meeting invitation, you are safe. And I was like, okay, Hunger Games, a little odd uh, way to do it. But, you know, in a Zoom world, I don't know if there is a better way to really like kind of mass do this where you, you can't have the information come out until it needs to come out. But I just thought, like, it's anxiety. That's a very, like, anxious feeling thing. And also, you got to know, if you're the CEO and you say that, people's minds just start racing in that direction. They're just imagining what the next hour of their life is going to be. They're not even going to hear the next three paragraphs you say. Like, their yeah. mind is gone. They checked out. It's thinking about themselves. And so whatever the next three paragraphs are, ignore it. So then he goes, all right, um, the moral conflict. This is the part I thought was whack. So he's like, in a t- couple of town halls ago, I said there was two perspectives around layoffs. The first is the shareholder perspective where reducing costs and protecting cash are what matters. The second is the employee perspective where nothing matters more than saving jobs and helping employees in a, you know, in a time where it's like unemployment at levels of the Great Depression. So each of these are clear, they're unambiguous, and they're correct from their perspective, but they are uh, diametrically opposed. This creates a conundrum for CEOs. CEOs sit between shareholders and employees and wish that they could do both. For every CEO, they have to deal with this conflict. I chose to manage this conflict by taking the shareholder perspective and deciding who should leave and taking the employee perspective on how to help. To me, I was like, what is this paragraph? Like, dude. Yeah, what the fuck, dude? It's all the same. Like, you're just trying to build a company that makes profit and does works with good people. That's the same thing. Yeah, and like, think about, you have to think about your audience. Do you think your audience gives a shit about the shareholder perspective and the, the dilemma you have as a CEO and how you've chose to straddle this as a CEO? It's not even about you. 
So I just thought this was the part that was really odd to me that like, see, it seemed like he, he, I don't know, I wouldn't have included this in the statement. And I thought that this made it look quite bad. And I, I would not want other CEOs emulating this part of the statement because what matters is your audience is your employees and you need to know, hey, this is really hard for us. Uh, we, we tried to analyze every situation, cut every other dollar we could before we cut anyone's jobs. And we did that, but this is the, this is the path we have to go. You know, this is, I'm terribly sorry. Like I did not manage the company in a way where we had enough buffer. Um, this is a failing on my part. This is the worst, you know, the worst day in my, my, uh, my time as a company. And, and it is for all of us. Um, and so like, here's what this means for you. And like, all you have to say is like, this sucks. Uh, we tried everything we could do. This was the last resort. And, you know, here's how we're going to make it right by you and not like this theory about how shareholder value matters and the CEO has to like straddle these things. It's like, nobody yeah, I, I think that and I think that that's not only does nobody care. I think that that is just a silly way to look at it, which is when you're building a company like step one is uh, create something that people want and get yes. it and get it into the hands, get it into their hands in a profitable way. OK, that's step one. Like that, that is just the, the, not, that's the basics of a company, which is you make something that someone wants to give you money or you make something and you make a profit off of it. Right. And if I was, I don't think that's it, step one, but that is the fundamental premise. Of that's the, the fundamental, yeah. that's the fundamental pre- premise is what I mean. And so if I was him, I'd be like, look, here's the deal. Like we expect, uh, we expect it to grow uh, a lot faster and we were investing in this and it, the plan would have worked, but this thing slowed everything down. And so we just have to cut things that are not profitable right. and I, that sucks. And I'm sorry that that sucks, but that's what's going to happen. And I think that if you just say that in a more straightforward way, instead of all this shareholder value shit, like yeah. people already know that people like, already if, know they're all adults in the room. They understand this fucking crazy virus is happening in companies across the board are having trouble. Some companies have no revenue now. Like, People get that, that that's happening. And it's just like, okay, so what's going to happen at our company? Oh, at our company, we've, they tried everything they could. They're making the, the sort of, this is what he needed to say was, this was our last resort. Um, we did this in a way where we're not going to have another round of layoffs because that creates, you know, I wouldn't say that I would, I would say we're going to try not to. Yeah. Like, you know, that is our goal and how we did this. But even then that's speaking to the people who are staying you know, really at this point, you just have to speak to the total group and just say, some of you are going to be affected. Here's how it works. We're, here's how we're doing our best to to make it right, to do right by everybody who's done right by us. This is no fault of your own. This is a fault of ours in running a company that was not, um, did not have the, the margin of error uh, to deal yeah, with. Yeah, I think that this. like what I would just say, if I had to do this, which I hope I never have to, but I, I probably really will have to one day, not like I'm saying at our company, but um well, I'm not implying anything. I'm just saying one day, <laughs> if I have a if I have a long career, which I will, um, that you got to say, look, I have a hundred percent of the flock that I have to manage and take care of, and sometimes that might mean that I have to fire thirty percent of the flock in order to take care of the other sixty, and that is just how life works, and this just sucks, and right. I'm trying to make this in such a way that the 40% are not completely hung out to dry, but this is just what I have to do. And I'm sorry that this is, is the situation. And if you want to blame someone, blame me. And that's that. Right. And that's pretty much all you have to say. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't need the, the epic speech. And, you know, right now we're kind of like, look, I think we're, we're clear that, Hey, personally for us, this didn't like come across great. And we weren't like, Oh wow, that was epic. Um, on the other side, uh, you know, we're just kind of off the cuff coming up with what a what a better speech might be. But the reality is that in this case, like you basically have a speechwriter. You have a multi billion, you have a billion dollar company, and you have time to think about this. And this is the what what we're reading is his output after thinking about it. And so that's the part that I thought was a little also I wouldn't have out. published it. I wouldn't have published this because it's like, dude, take this fuck it, take this on the chin. Like, and right. by the way, I know I'm criticizing this guy. I don't know him. He, I, and I will tell us to, I will say this to his face and I'm sure he's actually a good, good dude. This is just a big miss. But, uh, I would say like, dude, you got to take this one on the chin and just like, this is a loss and, right. and say, be a man and say what you want to say to your people, which, uh, that's your, your fault. That's wonderful. I wouldn't publish this. Agreed. I, I didn't understand that. And also, um, 
I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure what the what the sort of upside of was of that was. Now, on the other hand, I think they did some things great, right? So, like the actual actions that they were taking for people, I thought were great. They're like, look, we're going to extend the Cobra Health Insurance till the end of the year because health insurance is super important, especially right now. And so they didn't have to do that, but they did. Uh, they removed people's cliff and they invested their shares. They didn't have to do that, but they did. Um, you know, they, uh, they they gave them, I think, a bit of, bit of severance. Didn't have to do that, but they did. And then they have this sort of alumni network where they're trying to help people get jobs. Cool. I like all of that. Like, I liked all of that action. I just didn't like the preamble. And I didn't like the sort of pat on pat. It seemed a little bit like, pat me on the back, please. Can I show you my leadership during this adverse time? So you could, like, get, tell me I did a good job. And that's the part I didn't like. I liked a lot of the action. And yeah. The, and I'm like you, I don't know this guy. So, you know, this is not no... No personal thing against. I've, them. I've, I have friends who work with them, and I've heard a lot of positive stuff. Um, I just think that, like, and I, I, I value, I applaud Carta for raising this money and going big and trying to make something happen, and I applaud them from over, for over hiring in hopes of like it working. Like, I, I applaud the risk taking, and I want people who are listening that just because Sean and I are criticizing this guy, you got to take risks still, and you got to try this big shit, and it's not going to work all the time. Good. I mean, not good, but like whatever. That's just you got to. It comes with the territory, and I just wish he would have took it on the chin a little bit more. Right. Okay. I